Here we go. We're going to talk about this afternoon. We're going to we're going to talk about Nimrod's wife in history, uh, the history of from Babylon to Rome, and and we're going to do a historical survey of that to get an understanding of what happened there. Uh, I, I hope you're following this because it's actually going somewhere. We started out with Babylon and Nimrod. We started understanding Nimrod was a type of the Antichrist, and Nimrod is a type of those that. Um, did you you started over there? Okay, Nimrod was a type of the Antichrist and a world leader. Um, he wanted to rule the world. He wanted a great name. Uh, he built up a kingdom. It was called Babylon or Babel, and then they built a tower. Uh, what was that tower? Well, that tower was, you know. That tower was a place of worship, but it was also more than that. That tower is that tower was just a picture of something. Okay, it really was a symbol of what they were going to do, and uh, what they were after, and what the Antichrist was after, and what the sons of God and the daughters of men and that whole thing. What they were after, it's man. That's what you have to understand. Something Satan wants man, because man was to give his worship to God. Well, Satan wants that worship for him because he wants to ascend. Uh, up into the heights. He wants to, to rule over the congregation of the sides of the north. He wants to be like the Most High. So he wants the worship of man. So G God the Father sent Jesus Christ to be the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. That's what the Bible says, right? Well, since God sent a man, or sent, sent uh, his son, incarnated his son, Satan is going to do the same thing. He's sending his son. There's a seed there. Now, it's not going to be the same exact way because he can't do exactly what took place because he can't. He, he's not the Holy Ghost, so he can't overshadow a womb. Now, what he has to do is he has to use what's already there. So what's already there? The DNA, that's what's already there. The genetics, that's what's already there. That's what he's going to use. He's going to use man right there, and he's going to manipulate the gene code and, and the, D, the, the DNA, that's what's happening right now. You think the genetically modified foods and all those things, do you think those are all accidents? Do you think that's all not planned? Do you think that doesn't have anything really to do with anything? No, it has a lot to do with it. It's a plan. It's a plan for the future. It's all setting up. I believe before the flood, they knew how to do all kinds of things. I'm finding some things out that I'm not, I'm not even going to tell you about, but uh, just things in history. I, I'm not going to discuss them because it's just, I read, I read some things to my dad. I sent some things to Brother Paul. I sent some things to Brother Russ. I, I, I told Russ another scary bedtime story there. Uh, right, Brother Russ? <laughs> I sent him about three pages of that book that I was reading, a book that I'm reading, and, and some facts. And, and Brother Russ is like, oh, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> thanks a lot. I don't want to hear that before I go to bed. But, uh, hey, it's just things that have happened. There's a spirit world out there, okay? So all of that matters. All that is coming to the, to the seed. That's what Satan's after. He is after the seed. That's where he's going. That's where he's going. That's what he's after. This is what's coming, okay? This is the end. This is what's coming. All right, Revelation chapter 17. We, we find ourselves from Babylon, from Nimrod to Babylon to now. From how do we get from Babylon with this sacred feminine spirit? How do we go from Babylon to the end, to the sacred feminine? How do we do that? Here's how it happened, okay? But we're going to first read some verses from Revelation chapter 17. Father, we pray you bless us now. Help us, uh, Lord, to learn more from your word. Help us understand. Help us to learn some things even from history. We know, Lord, that history is not infallible. It's not perfect. It's not like the King James Bible. But, Lord, where it agrees with the King James Bible, we can understand and learn from it. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 3. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with, amaze, with admiration, 
with great admiration, excuse me. So, so he sees this woman and he wonders with great admiration, who is this lady? And, and what does she mean? And what does she have to do with everything? And so then he ident later on in the scriptures, he identifies her and tells you who this woman is and what she's about, what she's after. All right, he explains it. Now, Samaris was Nimrod's wife. Okay, Historically, we find that we don't see that in the Bible because the Bible doesn't mention her name. But all the history books do mention the fact that Nimrod's wife was Samaris, or she's known as Isis. She's known as a few other names. She's known as the Queen of Heaven. Uh, she's known as Diana. Uh, that same sacred feminine. Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago. So, um, understand here that, 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 that there is a line from her to Babylon to late end times Babylon. Nimrod, though, uh, Nimrod had told people that he had met this he was sailing on the on the river or whatever, sailing down there on the Nile or whatever, and he found this he found this woman that was a virgin, so he married her. Now, actually, that's not true though. History records her being a harlot, is what they record her, and he just brought her in and made up a story about her and made her a queen and called her a queen. Um, now, Nimrod was killed, and many believe that it was Shem. That he, that he was destroyed by, but the Bible doesn't say that specifically. But many believe that it was Shem that did it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of books talk about that, okay? There's a lot, of, a lot of history there. Again, that's not King James Bible, we know that, but there's some history there that, that, that goes along with that. Whether that's true or not, it makes sense because Shem was the high priest at that time. I mean, he would have been the one that would have had... The, the blessing passed down, then obviously it was given to Abraham, but Shem was the patriarch at that time. He was the man at that time uh, in, the, in the whole world. I mean, remember, he's the guy that saw before the flood. He's the guy that's seen after the flood. Uh, he's the guy that watched uh, the old world destroyed and all those giants and all those other, other creatures destroyed, and then he watched in the new world. He watched Babylon rise. He watched, he wrought, he watched the rise of the Tower of Babel. However, Nimrod was killed. Uh, according to tradition, Shem gathered... Now, this is tradition. But according to tradition, Shem gathered 72 co-conspirators to help him, and all that made their way to the palace where Nimrod lived. After catching him in a double cross, Shem killed Nimrod and cut his body into little pieces. That's the story. He alerted his co-conspirators, each of them, to take a piece of Nimrod's body and distribute it to all the cities under his rule. Remember hearing about that in the Bible? There was a, a man that did that. Remember that? He did that with a harlot. And he cut the body up and he sent it to all the tribes of Israel. Some say that that was, that, that was learned from this right here. Now, we don't have any way of verifying that. I'm just saying that's, that's what some say. But anyway, um, but that's what happened. They did as well. They did as they were told. And all this gore, it had a purpose to show the world proof positive that Nimrod was, wasn't a god. You have to understand, at that time, Nimrod was sporting himself to be a mighty one. He was saying that he was the mighty one of Israel, or I mean the mighty one of the world, that he was a Gabor, he was that mighty one. He was the one that would rule the world. But he was telling people that he was, he was the Messiah, he was God. And you don't need to worship that God. You know, he was like the Antichrist. He made himself great, and he, and he, and he wanted that. So... <clears throat> What history records is that Nimrod, or that, that Shem, cut up all the pieces of the body and sent them off to everybody around there to show them, no, Nimrod is not a god. He is a man, and I slew him, and he, he is just a man, and I'm, the, I'm a servant of the Most High God, and I slew him. Now, that's, that's the story. Um, whether that's true or not, we don't know for sure. But Nimrod's followers became very frightened. They worshipped him as a god, a god who would live forever. But now he was dead, and the validity of his religion was in question. Some say that Cush, his father, was already shamed for his actions previously. He also was not able to unite the people under this system as Nimrod could. Their whole system of control had to go in a different direction. Little known by her proper name, Semiramis, was to be exalted to one of the most famous women since the flood. She was Cush's wife at the time of the tower and was also the mother of Nimrod. Did you catch that? She was the mother of Nimrod, as well as the wife. Samer or, I mean, of, anyway, 
of the, the child, excuse me. Samaribus could maintain somewhat of a position of authority as long as her husband remained in power. Um, so anyway, once Nimrod was murdered, however, things took a turn. Things got crazy, obviously. But they exalted, they exalted her as a god. Now she said that she basically, this is the whole mother-child worship. This is where it comes from. It's not new. Everybody thinks that, that, that a lot of people in this world think that the biblical account of Noah the biblical, or excuse me, the biblical account of Mary and and uh, Jesus, what, or the account that the Roman Catholics give is the actual. Well, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. No, that no, that wasn't the way it was. That that came from Babylonian worship. It came from the worship of the child. It came from Tammuz worship and and Nimrod and Tammuz worship and and in Egypt they're known as Osiris, Isis, and Horus. It came from that type of worship. What you see that's done in Rome today of Mary and Jesus uh, as the baby and Mary is always seen, or, or you see Mary as the co-mediator, when you see those things, those things are not new. In fact, you're going to learn some, some facts here where some of that stuff come from, comes from here uh, today. This is the greatest twist. By the way, here's what they said about Samarimus would naturally be looked on upon as a great mother or a virgin. They said that, well, she didn't have a, nobody, nobody conceived, so she didn't have a, or nobody was with her, so she just, she was a virgin still. So the, the his story went out that, that she was this perpetual virgin. To godhood status, a perpetual virgin. Now, who, where have you heard that before? You hear that in Rome, don't you? All that is Babylonian. All of it is Babylonian. It, it all comes from the same place. This was the great twist in history of the world, the twist of Jesus Christ, the twist of the truth. This corruption of God's prophecy would rob millions of what would be the true Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. These people now begin to accept Nimrod as the fulfillment of prophecy. His death saved everyone from the curse of the garden. Do you see what was being set up? Samarimus naturally became defiled. She was the mother of the child, or deified, excuse me, the mother of the child. Many of the images the people created for her looked like, well, I'm going to show you this. I want to show you some of these. They're, they're not bad. None of them are bad. I mean, they're obviously blasphemous because they're not true, but they're not provocative in any way. But I'll show you some of these. So you kind of get an understanding. Let me see if I can find the good one here that'll kind of explain that. Well, actually, yeah, those are Samaritans. Let me see. Just give me a second here. There's quite a few of them that depict her uh, in in history uh, some call some would now this is supposed to be Mary that's who this is supposed to be if you see this this is this is this is at a Roman Catholic Church uh, now <clears throat> this is called Queen of Heaven Catholic Church hmm that's supposed to be Mary, but who is that? By the way, that's supposed to be Mary too. What's she sitting on, Brother Russ? She's sitting on the Ark of the Covenant. Does anybody know what the Ark? Yeah, she's defiling it. That's right. Does anybody know? Can you see that back there? Okay. Can you see what she's sitting on? She's sit she's sitting on the Ark of the Covenant. You see, that's the Ark of the... You know, who sits on the Ark of the Covenant, Brother Russ? Who's supposed to sit on it? Yep, they're around it. And if anybody sits on the Ark of the Testimony, it would be the Lord Jesus Christ that would sit as, a God, as God on that. It would not be, it would not be Mary as a co-redeemer. She would not sit on a picture of the throne of God. However, you want to hear, see something even eerier than this. This is supposed to be Mary, too. Man, this is weird. You see what she's doing with that? That's what you get for getting the cheap seats. You got to pay for the good seats. 
Isn't that right? Grandma's up front. She's got the good seat. <laughs> See that? See it? See, he's putting something in the middle of her. Can you see it? All these images mean something. Yeah, that's well, that's a bishop. I don't. That's not a pope. It's a bishop, or what do they call them? March bishops? I don't know what they call them. One of the Antichrists. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, they're they're uh, that's that's uh, that's supposed to be Mary. However, who it really is? Who it really is? Or who you'll see a similarity to in the way the women are is Isis or Osiris, or I, excuse me, Isis or Semiramis, because that's who they—that's who that is. <clears throat> that's that—that's—that's that's who that is. Now you see a similarity of a deified woman. You see the strangeness of it, how similar they are. Now they don't look exactly alike, um, but that's who that is. That's actually Semiramis. But uh, what you see are Isis, whichever. What you see, yeah, that's an even stranger one. I won't show you that one. Here's the temple of Isis. This is just a okay. This this is a this is a depiction of a deified woman, basically. Um, let's see here. These are now. This is Queen Semiramis. Does anybody can anybody catch anything about this that would strike you as familiar? Anybody see anything familiar about this? What is this? Does anybody see what that is? Why there's why is there a statue of this like this? This is ancient now, remember. This is an old depiction. But what is this trying to depict? What do you, you see you see this a lot. As a matter of fact, if you went to any Roman Catholic church, you would see this same thing. Only fancier. It's the mother child worship. This is Queen Semiramis, and that is her child. And he is the incarnate godson, is what they called him. That's who that is. This was a depiction of a movie that was done of, of Semiramis back in the 60s. So, if you don't think Hollywood understood that story... Oh, they understood it quite well. Anyway, those those pictures are pictures of of Semiramis and of uh, well, and here you go. Uh, this guy's got some great videos. Have you ever seen anything of his? But he's got some great videos on these these subjects. But anyway, you see the pictures of Mary there. You see, with those, they're really androgynous, is what they are. They're really kind of scary looking, but but uh, most of them are. But anyway, the signs that they give and everything else, uh, they're they're all like Masonic, but they they all come from the same basic root, and that is the worship of the that is the worship of the the mother child, the worship of whatever is called the Madonna. Okay, you've heard that before. That's that's what those things are. And that's what it's all about. That's that's it's those pictures you can you can go on and you can Google pictures of Semiramis and Google or Isis, Google pictures of Isis versus um <clears throat> Uh, versus Mary, and, and see the same the same design, the same why because it's the same person. When Roman Catholicism speaks of Mary, they are they are talking about Isis. That is who they're talking about. Now they'll say Mary. They'll say it's the they say Mary, the mother of God. Nowhere in Scripture is Mary called the mother of God. Where does that come from? It comes from Babylon. That's where it comes from. It comes from Antichrist. That's what it is. That's right. He always called her woman. Many of the images that people created for her looked like uh, the, uh, the ones that we showed you there. Nimrod became the basis for the pagan horned god, Semiramis, the goddess. Semiramis 
once again managed to stop the attempt of, of the co-conspirators. Anyway, basically she built a kingdom up, and, and that's what she did for a long time. The Babylonian religion of, of old seemed harsh to some. Now to make the religion look more pure and wholesome, there had to be some changes that were made. No longer could some of their graphic practices be openly practiced. No more human sacrifices out in the open, for example. Their whole religion had to change to make sure that no one of God, uh, no one of the godlike Shem or that came from Shem's line would be able to be such, go to such high levels again to almost devastate their control. So God came down and confounded them. If God wouldn't have done that, they would have, they would have been worldwide completely. But in Egypt, we see another that we see another worship there. In Egypt, the mother and child were worshipped under the names of Isis and Osiris. In India, even to this day, now listen to this as. Isi and Iswara in Asia as Sybil. These are all the same. Listen, these are the same people. This is the same mother-son worship as the Roman Catholic Church does today. It's no different. It's just a different name. But you find this story throughout all of history in every different nation or culture there. They have that same story of that child and the mother. Why? Because it came from Babylon. Sybil in pagan Rome, or Fortuna and Jupiter, or Jupiter the boy in Greece and Ceres, the great mother with the babe at her breast, or as Irene the goddess of peace with the boy Plutus in her arms, and even in Tibet, in China and Japan, the Jesuit missionaries, listen to this, listen to this, the Jesuit missionaries were astonished to find the counterpart of Madonna and her child as devoutly worshipped as in papal Rome itself, Xing Mu the Holy Mother in China, being represented with a child in her arms and a glory around her, exactly as if a Roman Catholic artist had been employed to set her up. Xing Mu is what it was called. Is what she was called. That was the same exact worship of the Jesuits. When they went there, they were like, whoa! We don't even have to teach them this. They already know it. So what they do? Just change the names. Or left it the same. Because it really didn't matter, did it? The, the very name, the very name by which the Italians commonly designate the Virgin is just the translation of one of the titles of the Babylonian goddess. As Baal or Belus was the name of the great male divinity of Babylon, so the female divinity was called Beltis. This name has been found in Nineveh, applied to the mother of the gods. And in, in a speech attributed to Nebuchadnezzar, preserved in Yusubi, both titles Belus and Beltis are conjoined as the titles of the great Babylonian god and goddess. The great Belus, as representing the highest title of the Babylonian god, was undoubtedly Baal, the Lord. Beltis, therefore, as the title of the female divinity, was equivalent to Baltai, which is in English, is my lady in Latin, Mia Domina, and in Italian, is corrupted into the well-known Madonna. Does it strike, does it, does it all strike you as odd as that Madonna is a Kabbalist? Look at her name, and look at her religion. See, she doesn't care if it's Mary, because she would call her Shekinah, because that's what the Kabbalah calls her. The Kabbalah calls her Shekinah. Like you've heard pastors say the Shekinah glory. Don't use that. That's not glory. That's the spirit of a harlot. It ain't in the Bible either, no. Shekinah is not is Kabbalistic. It's a it's it's a spirit, all right. They're not lying. It's just the spirit from the Kabbalah. It's a spirit from Jewish mysticism. It's Satan. It's the mother goddess. It's the same thing. She was Dominia or the Lady. Further, oops, I missed one. In connection with this, it may be observed that the name Juno, the classic queen of heaven, which in Greek was Hera also signified the lady, and that the peculiar title of Sybil at Rhea at Rome was Damina, the lady. Further, there is strong reason to believe that, that Athena, the well-known name of Minerva at Athens, has the very same meaning. 
do you realize that all these cultures that have this, they, they, they all tell the same story. They all give the same story because it's the same worship. It's the worship of the sacred feminine. It's not found in the Bible, as positive that is. The Lord is with the points pronounced a thon. We have evidence that this name was known as the Asi to the Asiatic Greeks from whom idolatry in a large measure came into European Greece as the name of God under a form of a thon. Estatheus is a note on the Paragus of Dionys Dionysus speaking of local names to the district of Laodicea says Athon is God. The feminine of Athon, the Lord is Athon, the lady. There's always the two. There's the, the, there's the, they're obsessed with a male-female God. They're absolutely 100% obsessed with it. Why? Because you must realize that that is the only way that Satan can accomplish anything. That's the only way that, that he can accomplish anything. He needs the male-female to do what he did. He's not God. He couldn't incarnate a son like that because he's not God. <clears throat> no doubt Minerva is commonly represented as a virgin, but for all that we learn from Strabo at Hierapitnia in Crete, the coins on which city was, says, says Mueller, Dorians have the Athenian symbols of Minerva upon them. She was said to be the mother of Corbabantes of Halus, or the sun. It is certain that the Egyptian Minerva, who was the prototype of the Athenian goddess, was a mother and was styled the goddess mother or the mother of gods. The first Jewish, or excuse me, the first Jesuit missionaries to China. Now understand, a lot of this information I'm getting comes from Hislop's two Babylons. Because what he did was he traced the mother goddess worship, or the mother son worship, all the way through history. He traced it through old records of records that were 7, 800 years old that he, was, that he was able to get a hold of. And he traced that worship all the way through because he knew there was something wrong with Roman Catholicism. Obviously, it's not biblical. But where did they get it from? And he found that they had gotten it from Babylon. That's where it came from. And every culture had it. The first Jesuit missionaries to China also wrote home to Europe that they found mentioned in the Chinese, listen to this, the, they found mentioned in the Chinese sacred books books unequivocally pagan of a mother and child very similar to their own Madonna and child at home. Another name was the holy another name of the Chinese holy mother was Supo in regard to which they said this the name of Xing Mu applied by the Chinese to their holy mother compared with another name of the same goddess in another province of China strongly favors the conclusion that Xing Mu is just a synonym for one of the well known names of the goddess mother of Babylon. Galepsi in his, in his land of Sinem states that the Chinese goddess mother or queen of heaven in the province of Fukin is worshipped by sea fearing people under the name of Ma Supo. Now Am Zupa signifies the gazing mother, and there is much reason to believe that Xing Mu signifies the same. For Mu was one of the forms in which Mount, the name of the great mother, appeared in Egypt in Egypt in Egypt, excuse me. In Chalde signifies to look or to gaze. The symbolic meaning of the vulture may be learned from the scriptural expression there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eyes have not seen. The vulture was noted for his sharp sight, and hence the eyes surrounded by the vulture's wings showed that for some other reason, the great mother of the gods in Egypt has been known as the gazer, the eye. The idea contained in the Egyptian symbol was evidently been borrowed from the Chalde. One of the most noted names of the Babylonian mother of God, of of the gods is just the Chalde form of the Hebrew Ra, which signifies at once a gazing woman and a vulture. Listen, all through the cultures, all through everything, there's the same strand of a story that was talks about a, 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 a woman conceiving a child without a husband, okay, and it becoming a god. Now, why would somebody want to have that story who would have put that in there? 
Satan through every culture. Why? To destroy faith in the gospel. To destroy faith in the word of God. When Israel had turned their back on the Lord and went a whoring after other gods, they were deceived into believing that Ashtaroth was the wife of Jehovah. Archaeologists have dug up remains that have the God of the Jews and his wife Ashtaroth. Now they called him Yahweh, which I don't believe the God of the, was the God of the Jews. I believe that's a I believe that was a made up name. Uh, that it's actually something else. But anyway, um, but the archaeologists they dug that up. She is an evil, seducing spirit, this Ashtaroth, and she is in the business of deceiving. This is that androgynous devil himself trying to deceive the people of God, to keep the mystery, the secret hid throughout the ages, who she really is and what her game really is. Why do you think the Roman Catholic Church has a, the, one of the biggest Roman Catholic churches has that, has the, the picture of, of Mary sitting on the Ark of the Covenant? Why would they do that? Because it's what they believe. Do you realize that one billion people tonight, this afternoon believe that? There are one billion people out there at least that believe in that. They're stuck in that. They believe that worship. That's why you and I have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. When you study this book, we've showed you the sacred feminine through here, but also some history to be able to explain to people, you know, that's not new, that's old. What they're doing is not, has nothing to do with the Word of God. It has to do with paganism. That's where it comes from. Follow the Queen of Heaven is the game, and not the Lord Jesus Christ. They're deceived, and someone needs to equip you so you can help others. You think about it. During evangelism or working with your family, you know people right now that are deceived into Catholicism. How many of you know somebody that's into Catholicism right now that believes the Roman Catholic Church? They, they're Catholics. They, for all points of view, they believe it. I know people that are. They're deceived by it. So why do we do this? Why do we study this? Because you, what you don't understand is that, that the cult mentality, the cult that's out there, this, this false Babylonian worship that is out there, we're not even touched the, the tip of the iceberg on Babylonian worship yet, but that Babylonian worship, what it is is, is what Proverbs 23, verse number 27 says it is, for a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. What does that mean? You get in that pit, and you're not going to get out a lot of times. You know how many people fall into that deep ditch of false doctrine, that deep ditch of Roman Catholicism, and never get out? They can't get out. And we need to be able to explain and to teach them the truth about things. She's the harlot, the mystery Babylon. She's that mother of all harlots. Turn to Proverbs chapter 2. Turn there, Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 18. <clears throat> Again, this, this Nimrod's wife, or, or Isis, if you want to call her that, you can call her Samarimus. It doesn't matter what you call her. You can call her the Queen of Heaven, Diana. You can call her the Statue of Liberty if you want to, because that's what it is. Amen. You can call it the goddess liberty. Hey, you know what? You may think, preacher, come on, this is no video. Why do we know that all this came from Babylon? Why do we know these things about history? Why do we know that? Well, I don't know. Don't you kind, don't you kind, uh, kind of find it a little bit odd that our nation's capital and all the buildings around it are all surrounded by pagan idols? And all the laws that they make and all the liberty, the Statue of Liberty and all these things are all pagan? All of them are pagan. All of them are false gods. Well, guess what? Until somebody told you, you didn't know any of that, did you? Amen. Until somebody explained to you that there's a false god sitting out. How about the goddess of liberty that sits on the Capitol building? Isn't that nice? This is supposed to be, the, this is supposed to be a Christian nation. Really? You think D.C. is Christian? Of course, I don't think D.C. is America. But anyway, uh, if you look at if you look at D.C., do you think D.C. Do you think when you look at that where all the the laws come from, all the laws originate from, all of everything that flows out of that, you think that's a Christian place? Have you walked around and looked at those monuments? Have you seen pictures of those things? Those have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Those are idols. Nothing to do with Christ. None of that's none of that's biblical. 
None of it is. It's all idols. The, the goddess liberty, what is the spirit that comes from that? I don't know. We looked at the spirit of Jezebel today. You want to know what I find fascinating? The spirit of Jezebel or that mystery Babylon, that goddess of liberty spirit, you know what? She doesn't care a thing for this book. You know what else she doesn't care for? The written law. So let me ask you this. How many times have they passed laws here that have nothing to do with the written law of America? How many times have they just now, your president comes out and he says, I know we passed the health care bill, but we're just not going to do it. We're, we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, withhold it for a year. We're going to keep the small businesses. We're, we're going to keep this. We, we can't even run a website. So they can't do anything. So that, what do they do? They say, we're not going to do it. Wait a minute. You, you're not going to enforce your own bill that you just passed? Why? This spirit. That's this spirit. That's this goddess of liberty, this, this sacred feminine, this Jezebel spirit. It's devilish. It's wicked. That's what it is. And that's where it comes from. It's all a bunch of wicked idolatry. That's what it is. Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 18. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life. How many times have you seen people be born, live, and die under Catholicism and go to hell? Yep. How many people do you think are snared with Rome and never come out of it, never get saved? Turn to Proverbs chapter 7, verse number 5. It is a big deal to understand, identify. This is the same worship all through the centuries, all through the cultures. Roman Catholicism is nothing more than Babylonian worship. It's all this. <clears throat> it's just Babylonian worship. Can I tell you that I've sat in Baptist churches for 10 years, 12 years, and I've never had one Baptist pastor tell me that? Oh, you know, you got to be careful what you say about the Pope. Because you might offend somebody, and then they'll never come back. They might hear your teaching on Catholicism, and they may never get saved. Like you said, what are they going to go to do, a second hell? They're already dying and going to hell. Proverbs chapter 7. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. What is a strange woman in Scripture? It is a woman, yes, but it's also a false doctrine. It's also the false religion. It's also mystery Babylon. That's the strange woman. Look at this, how it applies to it. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her lit, with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. What does that sound like? The twilight, the evening, the black and dark night. It's false. It's false religion. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn with her feet. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait in every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. Have I paid my vows? Therefore, look, at she's religious. It's religious. There's vows. Does that sound like Roman Catholicism? Sure it does. There's vows there. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. It's interesting. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves, for the good man is not at home. He has gone away on a long journey. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. That's what's happening. That's what Roman Catholicism does. That's, that's what happens at this false doctrine. 
Where does it lead to? With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline under her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she has cast down many wounded. How many? How many wounded? How many have died because of this? Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. When you walk into a Roman Catholic church building, you're walking into the way to hell. You are, when you walk in there, you are walking into the way of hell. That's strong. Yeah, it is. Well, it's the way to hell. That's what it is. That leads straight to hell. You go to Roman Catholic Church, you're going to die and go to hell. You follow their ways, you're going to die and go to hell. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Man, it's an, it, the Bible talks about these. What are they? They're an open sepulcher. That's what they are. Their mouths are open sepulcher. What does that mean? Their mouths speak death. And everything, their throat is an open sepulcher, and you fall into that, and you die, and you never come out of it. And that's what Rome is, the words of death. That's what's in their mouth. They speak, and they teach what will lead to hell. And people are caught in it today. They're trapped in it. <clears throat> then you come to the queen. In Revelation chapter 18, and we'll be done. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every, hate, uh, every unclean, hate, hateful bird. The hold of every foul spirit. It's Rome. That's where we're heading. In the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Do you realize that you can go nowhere? Or that, that, do you realize that, that, that Rome is the only church that actually has a seat at the U.N.? Do you realize that the Pope is given diplomatic immunity? Do you realize that the President of the United States was questioned about <clears throat> the charges that were brought that, they, that the Pope knew that they were transferring bishops that had have, that have molested children to different parishes and the Pope knew it? And there's a lawsuit coming. He said, well, well, we want to charge the Pope. We want to charge the Vatican. And the Pope and the President of the United States stood up and he said, in a meeting, he said, no, the Pope has diplomatic immunity. He can't be arrested. He's the head of a state. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Do you not find it odd? Do you not find it odd that everyone, every head of the state, does two things? They either bow at the wailing wall, which is another story I'm not getting into, but they either bow at the wailing wall, or what's the other thing they do? They bow and kiss the Pope's ring. Every head of the state has done it. Every one of them. They kiss the finger of the Pope. Did you know that? Didn't know that? You knew that, Brother Ross, didn't you? Yeah. All the American American presidents do it. Yeah, Obama bows to everybody. But 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 as far as kiss, do you understand? What does that mean? Do you think when they kiss his finger? What what does that mean? Yeah, do you know what you know what they're saying? You have dominion over my over my country. Do you understand? That's what they're saying when they kiss because. I mean, nobody comes here and kisses our president's finger like that. 
Why are they doing it to him? Because of this verse. For all the, all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of earth are waxed rich through her abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people! You know, I'm amazed that you can sit week after week, month after month, year after year in churches, and you never hear this. Never hear it. Why? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. You know how many people are stuck in Babylon? How many people are shacked up with the Roman Catholic Church? I mean, Rick Warren, all these leaders of American leaders, all shacked up with Rome. You even had the, 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 uh, the former pastor, the former pastor of the largest independent fundamental Baptist church in America, said, openly say that he read the letter, read, read the Pope's sermons. And he said, I tried to get a feel for who the man was. Now his father-in-law got up on stage and said, he's the vicar of hell. We don't think he's a godly man. We think he's the vicar of hell. But his son-in-law got up and said what? Said, oh, I read his, I tried to get a feel for his sermons. I read his sermons. I, I tried to get a feel for who he was. Well, I can tell you real quick who he is. He's a devil! That was easy. He's a devil. That's who he is. You really think the Pope's a bad guy? Yeah, every single one of them were devils. Yeah, they all were. A bunch of murderous, butchering devils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And still are. <clears throat> For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Remember, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones. You ever seen the Vatican? You ever seen the Pope? This one is trying to... He's trying to... Um, he's trying to act like he's not rich. He got on there the other day and says, you know, all, capitalism is, is, is bad and you all need to give more to charity and give, and you don't need to be so rich. And you know, so he said, well, I mean, the, the Vatican is worth trillions of dollars. Why don't they just sell out? Why doesn't he just sell out? They're worth trillions. What do you need a, what do you need a Vatican for? Well, I guess to hold everything you stole from everybody. Maybe that's it. It's a good idea. Probably everything you stole from, from Baptists and you murdered them and slaughtered them and stole their books and, and, uh, and everything else you took from and all the, all the wealth of the world. What's that? Yeah, that's what they did. They stole everything. They took everything. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet in color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Oh. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Ain't that the truth? And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. 
We're going to stop here, but we'll pick up on, on the Queen of Heaven, Rome, another day. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the truth of it, Lord. Thank you for just preserving it and, and giving us the preserved, inspired words of God here for us. And Lord, we, we also thank you, Lord, for just a record historically of things that we can see that happened to our forefathers and those that were murdered for their faith, those that stood up against that great whore, Rome, and lost their lives for it, or those that protected and hid the Word of God so they could pass it on to generations that Rome wanted to keep from everybody. Lord, thank you for your mercy to us. Help us understand these things and help others with it. Teach Roman Catholics the truth of this and try to help them to get out of that cult and get born again by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.